Good morning, friends. Stephen Benoon with Israeli News Live here on our Patreon channel. And uh, I wanted to discuss with you guys a very, very serious issue that uh, the nation is facing. And this is a very difficult situation to have to discuss. Uh, and before I do, I want to play this one little part here, one clip Trump says here in this video. Communities, but I always say for the black community, nobody has done more for the black community than Donald Trump since Abraham Lincoln. Now, I, I can't validate whether that's true or not. I have no idea. Of course, you know, presidents, politicians, etc., they're always going to make uh, or to assert uh, their opinions about things. Uh, but this video is not so much about what President Trump has done or has not done for the black community. This video happens to be done with a very sensitive issue of a possible civil war coming in this nation. And I had generally thought from the information that I had been given initially that that civil war would come down to um, how would I put this? It would actually be a civil war between Democrat, Republican over this issue with Trump. And again, like in the case with Mar-a-Lago, uh, his, his home being raided recently by the FBI. And from what I understand, it wasn't that it was a surprise raid. Uh, his attorney was actively involved uh, negotiating with the government, the FBI, about this this search warrant that was going to be conducted on Trump's home, and uh, but if, but if you remember, I'd already told you guys, oh gosh, months ago, that when uh, we were starting to see evidence that Trump would try to go back into office again, that they would do the Biden administration would do everything they can to prevent that from happening, and they would work uh, with events around uh, January sixth. Uh, after the election in order to uh, try to prevent him from getting in office. And even that would seem to almost ignite a civil war type scenario. Uh, I've been in far more many discussions about this since then. And uh, I, I do know that President Trump uh, is planning on running. And this is why they're stepping up these efforts. Uh, I remember even sharing with you guys that the Biden administration would bring about a civil war in order to make sure he does not run for re-election, that they would go that far. In some of the, uh, the meetings I've been in here in an undisclosed location, we have discussed this at much greater depth, and I far better understand what and how this civil war would play out. It's not really a planned war either, by the way. This is just something that is being discussed and prepared behind the scenes in the event that uh, Trump does try to run for office. And, and I can also tell you as well, and this is gonna come as maybe a shock to many, we know that presidents are controlled from behind the scenes. I don't even want to, to uh, disannul that fact. I've, I've shared that with you guys many times. You have levels that happen. You have uh, presidents are at level three. You have levels four and five, which are normally people like Kissinger's, Kissinger and Soros, uh, which there is some speculation that Soros may be already dead. Uh, I'm actually looking into that information too as, uh, as we speak here. Uh, and but that's that part there. Then you go into level six and seven, which are the big families, the Rothschilds, the uh, different groups like that, that control the monetary system of the world, uh, the International Monetary Fund, the different things like that. And they control the levels four or five, and level four or five control presidents, not just pre world leaders, Putin, uh, President Xi of China, all, them, all these are controlled. But when you get down to the, the, the people that are running against one another in politics, like Biden versus Trump, et cetera, some people have the ideology because these leaders are controlled by higher ups in uh, whether you want to call it, uh, you know, corporate, uh, corporate entities, et cetera, that behind the scenes, they're just good friends, good old buddies, and they take care of one another. 
And sometimes I've actually believed that myself. But I got to see personally, up close, uh, messages that were being discussed by President Trump's son with another person that I know. I got to see those messages about what was happening there at Mar-a-Lago. And for the first time, I really realized that on that level, there's really a battle between the two camps. And because one of the messages said, the left is coming very heavy against my father. And my father needs to speak with you. That, like I said, that let me know something. Uh, I also know, too, that, um, that the president's son said his father really did not want to run for president, but he feels like he's the only guy that can put things in order under the circumstances of what's going on. That's why he's willing to try to run again. Uh, he feels like he's the only one that can tackle the world's problems. So regardless of who controls the president, the, the puppet strings behind the scenes, there is a realization of what these people think as far as on the level that they play on that they can make a difference. And, and President Trump is no difference when it, different when it comes to that. There are those that are controlling him in the background. So anyway, <clears throat> we're, we're moving up to this issue, though, about civil war. And the way it was discussed with me is that um, in these meetings here, that the, the president um, pre or excuse me, President Trump, former President Trump, wants to go back into office to try to turn things around. And the leaders, and I'm talking about very high up leaders, and I'm not at, I'm not at liberty to say where these leaders are, what entities they are in as of right now, but they are organizing together in the, in the black community uh, because they feel like that Trump is not for them. And again, I'm not here to argue if he is or if he is not. Um, and I do know that <clears throat> there is a, a, a vast majority of the, our, our, our uh, black uh, brothers and sisters are Democrat. And, and to me, I don't care about either side either. When it comes to that, Democratic Republic doesn't make any difference to me. There's so much corruption in both sides of government. I just don't see much good on either side. But there is major movement and organization, and of course there has been a major movement in order to bring in uh, more uh, of the black community into power, into politics. And, and, and quite frankly, you know, in that regards, it makes sense because uh, if you expect to make a difference, you got to get in control politically. And so they realize that as well, and they have been moving into positions of power. What's interesting, though, what I did learn, and this is why I have a picture of Trump up here by his famous border wall on the southern border there, is what people do not realize is that when Trump was erecting the, 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 the southern border wall, he was actually doing this, oddly as it may sound, to protect and help the black community. Now, most people would scratch your head and say, Steve, that's absolutely insane. Hear me out on this, though, because like I said, we're going to go ahead, we're going to take this a little bit deeper here today. The Biden administration has turned a blind eye to the illegal immigration coming across the border because they, the, the, the Democrats, although they strongly... Um, appreciate the votes of the black community to put them in power. They're also fearful of the, the, the Democratic Party losing its, and, and, and listen, I say this in all due respect, and I don't mean this bad in no part for me, so understand I'm only disseminating this information, that they don't want to lose their control. The white people of the Democratic Party do not want to lose control of that party. 
Now, as absurd as that may sound, that's true. And so they know that the Hispanics and the black community don't necessarily get along. So if there's going to be a civil war in this nation, they, Biden has been allowing, his administration has been allowing this to happen in order to cause more tension and more chaos and more uh, fight in this country as a result. And again, I'm not saying that that's my opinion. I'm sharing with you the things that I am hearing from the inside. So I don't know the, the answer to this. I mean, for me, it's better that we, we get along, we love one another, and you know we don't look down upon somebody else because of their skin color. And, and it doesn't matter to me whether it is white or black or whether it's Chinese or whether it's uh, a Latino or Hispanic or, or whatever the case may be or Native American. We're all human beings and we should love one another regardless. Regardless of our differences, try to come as close as we can to the middle. But unfortunately, this civil war issue is something that is, according to the government people on the inside, they say it's not a matter of if, it's just a matter of when. They've been, been anticipating this for some time. So again, Trump building this wall he also knew about this coming civil war, and he did not want, and this is the part they're not going to tell you, he did not want that causing more problems in the country, even though he realizes what the civil war is about. The Biden administration also, though, has already made an agreement with China, and I shared this with you already, that if we ended up in civil war in this nation, that China would be the one that would come in here as UN peacekeepers to help stop the civil war. Now, oddly enough, as I said, the leaders of major organizations in this country, uh, in the black community, have expressed very clearly that if Trump runs, they're willing to go to civil war over a situation like this because they fear they fear President Trump. And, and, and I, like I said, former President Trump, I'm not here to take sides on either one on this case here. I'm just simply saying that's their fear. How that got in there, I don't know. I don't say that Trump is any savior. If anything, my concern would, if Trump got into power is that he would once again go with the evangelical side, go with the, uh, the, the, the Jewish leaders and, and be controlled by them, and he would end up taking us not only into a new world order, but into a one world religion that would even be more dangerous than anything else could ever be imagined. But with Biden, it's no difference. He will still take you into a new world order, and he would still take you into a one world religion as well. The only difference is, is he may not be uh, singing the banners with the evangelicals, whereas President Trump would, because President Trump really believes that the evangelicals uh, mean well for this country. And so, blind as that may be, that's the way that is, and we can't change that. But once they put Chinese UN peacekeepers here to stop a civil war, they will disarm this nation. They will bring about that new world order, and so it would happen no matter which way you go. New World Order would come no matter which way. But what blows me away, though, is I did not look at a civil war happening in this regards here. I just felt like it would be Democrat-Republican hating each other because one, let's say Trump runs and then, or they end up putting him in jail or something like that, then the, then the, uh, the patriots would rise up. Uh, I didn't know that what the government's fear is, is that it is actually the black community that will actually begin this. And the way that I was told that this would start, it will begin uh, in the case of major cities where the disgruntledness will begin, the fighting will begin there to start like in riots, but then it would become more organized. Um, and I would say to my black brothers and sisters, I love you. I would not want you to, to fall into the trap 
of this type of thinking. Just like I don't want to see patriots and Christians fall into the trap of civil war in this nation because of their ideology and believing, you know, that uh, whatever it may be, that we go take out our neighbor because we don't agree with them either. War is not the way to settle anything. But sadly, I believe it's coming regardless. And I see the stage being set. Um, I really, I've got to really weigh some things out. There's other things that I've been told about as well that's coming that I really want to understand. I did, I, I was told though that after the Civil War, that there will be a prevailing, the, the black community will prevail. Um, not so much, I mean, the, the Civil War will not prevail anything as far as one wins, the other one loses, but it will help them to gain more momentum and power. And that when the dust settles, that will take place. And you got to think about this. Why would that be the case? Biden has already made that agreement with China to put things down, but he's not going to turn against the Democrats as a result. Again, it will be that the Republicans incited this, that they were the ones that caused it. But ironically, I have to agree uh, with the one insider that, that, that told me about this. You know, the President Trump, former President Trump, though, actually was helping them, but he couldn't come out and say why. He knew, President Trump knew that they were opening these borders because they, they've known that this war has been coming in. Let me tell you, a lot longer than you could ever imagine. I heard, I won't go into the dates, but I already heard about the dates of when they knew about all this, right? And he was trying to minimize what would happen in this country. And you guys know I've got a lot of issues when it comes to President Trump falling for, for Israel, falling for uh, this New World Order plan, things like that. But... I realize there are some things that he's doing that he's trying to do to help this nation. And I will say that I have to give him credit for that. President Trump loves America. Um, you know, and, but I am just really, 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 it's bothering me to hear about this. And, it, and especially when it comes to the black community. Um, some of the most wonderful people you'll ever want to meet. And, uh, and to see that the nation is being pitted against each other over this political nonsense. It, it's really sad. I know Cynthia McKinney, uh, she's been on with us many times in the past. And, uh, you know, look up Cynthia McKinney. She was a congresswoman uh, for for 12 years and uh, amazing amazing woman she stood up against that little country south of Lebanon demanding that the politicians have to sign pledges to the state of Israel on an annual every time they come, when they come into office she recognized that control and she was probably one of the last really good Congress woman, women, and, or whether it be man or woman, that cared about this country, about the people, and put aside all the nonsense in order to fight for truth and justice. And she told me straight up, because I asked her, do we have any good Congress people in office? She said the last good one, she said, was Rand Paul. Or, I'm sorry. Uh, yeah, Rand Paul. Not, she said his son is not his father. But, uh, so we have very few vo good voices that are willing to stand for truth today, friends. Uh, very sad. Anyway, I won't hold you any longer. I, 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 I'm, I'm troubled even trying to tell you these things. And uh, hopefully I don't have any problem with Patreon in sharing this information. Uh, 
I hope that this does not in any way violate what they consider their guidelines. But, uh, uh, and by the way, iConnect has developed a platform like, I, like Patreon as well that we'll be setting up before long uh, to where we won't have to worry about that. Anyway, God bless you. Thank you for listening. Stephen Benoon with Israeli News Live.